example, and I'm going to talk about uh, stack switching uh, for fun and profit a bit. Uh, so I go by the name Sagul everywhere. Um, I love this conference. It's one of my favorites, and I uh, like to make sort of everything I do open source. Uh, you can see some of the stuff I do there in GitHub. I'll talk about one of uh, my projects today, uh, alongside other things. But first, uh, let's check some background. Who here knows what Greenlet is? OK, out of those, keep your hands up, please. <laughs> For those uh, who has used Greenlet uh, standalone, like without Gvent or Avon, okay, a lot less. And who understands how it works internally? <laughs> uh, okay, a few. So you'll not learn much. <laughs> Let's see. So uh, what is Greenlet? Uh, Greenlet is a library which provides us with uh, micro threading support, which are unscheduled at very lightweight. What this means is that we have a primitive to run uh, our code, like if it were threads but it's much more lightweight, so we can run orders of magnitude more of them than we can actual threads. And the fact that they're unscheduled means that uh, the kernel will not decide which of the greenlets will run. We do. They are cooperative. If one of the greenlets is running, the others are not running. So when we decide to switch away and run one of our other greenlets, then it will start running. Otherwise, the current one will keep on running. Um, and it's a spin off uh, Stackless Python, which uh, I'll talk about uh, a bit later. The API is pretty simple. So I took like a simplified version here. Uh, when we create a Greenlet object, we just pass a function and a parent. We'll talk about parents in a bit. So basically, we create a Greenlet object, which will later run the function when we start it. Then when we call switch, we can pass arguments and keyword arguments. And the first time we call switch, the function will be called, the function we passed to init will be called with the arguments and keyword arguments. Now, if the Greenlet was already running, uh, that means that it did call switch at some point to switch somewhere else. And then that, that function call to switch will appear to return <coughs> what we have passed to uh, this switch call. And throw is basically like switch, but instead of passing a value, it raises an exception. If we don't specify one, the default is greenlet exit, which will cause our greenlet to basically uh, stop running. Now, here's an, uh, a very simple example of what's happening. Uh, so we get the current greenlet with a get current. Uh, there's always a current greenlet, even if we didn't create one. If we didn't create one, but what we get is the main greenlet, let's say. And there's one of those per thread. That is the only one that doesn't have a parent. The others always have a parent. Now here, the example, we create a greenlet to call the function bar. And we switch to it by passing 42. And in bar, we call foo. And in foo, we switch to main, which means when we reach this statement, we do like go to here. And when we go to here, uh, this switch appears to return 42 because it's what we passed here on main.switch. So we print 42. Then we continue with the rest. We switch again to G1, but G1 was actually right here. So we resume, then full will return, and then re we return hello. And where were we? Here. So we print hello. And then we can query the dead attribute of a greenlet to know if it's actually done. And in this case, it will return true, because it, it has just finished. Now, how does this actually work? It uses a technique called stack switching or stack slicing, which uses non-portable assembly code to basically um, mangle the C call stack uh, back and forth so that we can do these sort of go-tos in a way. So we are executing this function right here, but we want to go to that place over there. So we need a consistent C stack all the time. And we have some uh, assembly code to basically arrange for that. Uh, at the same time, because we're mangling a lot of state there, we need to, to keep it consistent. That is, we need to save CP registers and we need to keep the Python state in a sane way. That means we need to keep the exception state, the recursion depth, and uh, what else? And the current Python frame. So if I'm executing this function, which is like three levels deep into the recursion stack, and I do switch to another greenlet, which was 15 levels of recursion depth there, we need to remember this and arrange everything. I have some very nice diagrams explaining everything. So uh, <laughs> here is the C stack the C call stack going downwards. So the moment we create the greenlet, we'll save, we'll save uh, the, the, the current position as the stack stop pointer. This is an implementation detail, let's say. Then later on, there are more calls in our C stack. And we have our current stack pointer. And that one we will save as stack start. So the range in the C stack between the stop pointer and the start pointer 
will be copied onto the heap. So now we have that thing saved right there, and we go execute some other greenlet. And when we want to return to the other one, we'll just get it from the heap, put it onto the stack, and it will appear like we just continued executing the function, like nothing happened. So we kind of fooled the uh, whole thing, and that's how uh, we achieve it. Now, something else I said I would talk about the parents. Uh, the greenlets are organized in like a tree structure. So all of them have a parent. And when the execution of a greenlet finishes, it switches back to the parent. So the parent can continue with its, with its business. So the only one that doesn't have a parent, as I said, is the main greenlet. Uh, now, as you may have seen already from the first example, the execution order is not always obvious in the sense that it is consistent, so it executes in the order. We say so. However, we need to know what we're doing because we call switch, so then you need to aware, be aware that you go there. Then if the greenlet dies, you go to the parent, so you go there. So sometimes kind of building the mental model of what's going on cannot be that straightforward. Uh, here's an example of, um, I think is an interesting example of a use of greenlet, which is kind of undo a callback. The idea is that we have an asynchronous function, let's say foo async, which gets a single callback, which will be called in the future with two arguments, result and error. And we want to build a synchronous version of this API. So it would say, OK, we take the current greenlet, so wherever we are right now, and we call foo async. Um, and in the callback we pass, basically what we will do is switch back to our current greenlet, either with the value if the result was successful, or we will throw an exception so it will race. And then we switch to main. Now, what will happen is that here, our foo sync function will appear to block in the sense that, OK, we went away. We're waiting here for something to happen. Now, when the callback is called, let's say, whatever, it's, um, it's running in a different place. And at some point, it gets called. Then we will do a switch or throw. And we will, uh, this call will appear to either return a value or it will um, actually raise an exception. Actually, there should be return here, I guess. And uh, then we made an asynchronous function looking synchronous. This is basically kind of the trick that Jiva and Evanlet and other frameworks use to make an asynchronous version of, of something synchronous looking. Um, now, I said that Greenland is a, um, is a spin off of Stackless. Stackless is a, it's a fork of Python that appeared in 1999 by Christian Tismer and others. Uh, it provides task, tasklets as channels at its main primitives to achieve highly concur uh, high concurrency. And these tasklets, these tasklets are basically, uh, well, Greenlet is kind of like the tasklet. It was taken from there, let's say. But uh, Stackless is a bit different in that it has a built-in scheduler. So it can schedule tasks. You need to schedule the tasks. And they run either cooperatively or even preemptively if you want to. And it has a couple of approaches to switching. So it has soft switching and hard switching. Uh, to put it really, really simple, soft switching would be like mangling some pointers instead of dealing with a C stack. So if we're in Python, we have a chain of, of Python frames, because we have called this function, this function, this function. So if nothing, if we didn't call any C module or anything, chances are that we can get away with just modifying what the current frame is and go back in time in a way. Uh, for this, we need a modify interpreter. I believe a stackless is, is used in EVE Online. The game thing. Um, and they use all these features. And hard switching is uh, basically what I already explained about doing the non-portable assembly code per platform to do mangling of the, of the C stack. Now, enter PyPy. For those who have been living under rock, it is a shiny new interpreter which runs very fast and has a lot of cool things. Now, I want to focus on one of the cool things that it has, which is it provides an implementation for both Greenlet and Stackless. And it does so by using uh, a module, well, an object called a continue let, which is hidden somewhere in PyPy. Uh, it's in the underscore continuation module. I guess the underscore means don't use, um, but we should. So uh, continue lets are one shot continuations. And basically, they are built on top of something that does all this switching magic under the hoods. And that thing is called stacklet. And it's written in C and is right there in the source code of PyPy. It's written by Armin Rigo, which is speaking later today. I hope he's not here to kill me or something. Um, so let's look at what continue let's do. The API, you will see that is kind of similar to, to Greenlet. So we build a function, we build a continue let by passing uh, function arguments and keyword arguments. 
So in this case, we bind it early. That means when we call init in a continue that, we already design what function and with which arguments will be called the first time. We arrange for it. Then when you call switch, we switch to it. Um, now, when it's not the first time we call switch, we can also pass values, just like we do in Greenland. When you pass a value and the call to switch will appear to return a value in the uh, other, uh, sorry, continue line. Now, uh, in continue line, we also have the two uh, argument, which means we can do a double switch. So if we call c1.switch to c2, what will happen is that we switch from the current one to c1, and then later we switch immediately to uh, c2, which is different from switching directly because we put the other one in the middle. And likewise, we have throw. In this case, there is no built-in default exception or anything. Uh, we just need, always need to specify what exception, with what value, and with whatever traceback we want. Um, and then the we will switch, we'll activate that, that continue let, and the exception will be raised. Now, let's go a bit down um, to see to check what stackless is, uh, stacklet is. Stacklet is that tiny library on which ContinueLet is built on top. It's a single C file, around 400 lines of C code. So it's actually pretty short, plus all the uh, assembler files for the per platform mangling of registers and, and saving the state. Uh, currently, x86, 64, um, and RAM are supported. So that kind of covers a lot. And it has a pretty nice and simple API. Uh, let's have a quick pick. Uh, because it supports uh, multi-threading, let's say, we need to create a thread handle, let's say. So basically, each C thread will have its own set of stacklets. And you cannot switch between uh, different thread stacklets. So with that, with that thread handle, we basically say, I want to create a staglet for this thread. Uh, then we create it with new. Now this, um, this starts to run it immediately. So you create it and let's say switch to it in a way. So we pass the thread handle, the run function, and the argument we want to run, and it will call that function in a new staglet, which is started immediately. Now later on, uh, we can switch to a, to a target handle, because this function will return uh, a handle to which we can switch later on. So uh, with that single function, we switch to it. Here there is no throw because, well, it's C. We don't have try except there. Uh, here's a very, very simplistic example. So here we create a new thread, uh, and we call test new, which will create a new stacklet handle. What this returns is basically the, uh, we, we returns a new staglet handle, but because we already finished the execution, because it's called immediately, it will be empty. So here is the uh, empty staglet handle. So basically what happens is that this function just is finished. So what happens is we call this empty callback with the 1, 2, 3 as the argument, which we check right there, and we return the handle. Basically, from uh, <coughs> when we get our, our staglet function call, we need to return which will be the next one to execute. Now, here we just return the one that got passed to us, which is empty because no other thing will run here. So we just run that function and finished. Um, this is a very simple example, but uh, you can check inside the uh, staglet directory. There's a test.c file with a bunch of uh, tests there uh, for you to check. And uh, well, also continue let itself and uh, something else I'm going to talk about now is based on top of a staglet, so you can see how to actually use it. So uh, now I want to talk about Fibers. Fibers is a, a project of mine which implements microthreads for Python, uh, inspired by the Threading API plus the Greenlet API, in a way. So it uses a staglet underneath, or the continuelet object if we are in PyPy. So it works on C Python and PyPy. Uh, you can download right there or uh, install it with uh, pip. And here is the, the API. So the init API looks pretty much like the threading module. So we create a fiber by passing a target. The arguments are the keyword arguments. So we bind early. Early on, we decide what function we want to call and with what arguments. We can also pass uh, the parent, because fibers are also arranged in a tree form, just like a greenlet. So when a fiber is finished, we'll switch execution automatically to the parent. Now, the switch function only gets one value because basically when you call switch with a value the first time, it's actually an invalid condition and you'll get an exception because we already decided with what arguments we're going to run the function. So the only case when you can put a value on switch 
is when you are when you want to switch to an already running um, fiber and you want it to return that value. So that's when we would specify it. And likewise, throw will do the same as switch, but it will raise the given exception. Here, there is no hidden fiber exit exception or anything. So whatever exception you pass to, to throw, it will be raised there. So no exception is swallowed or nothing like that. Now, some of you might be wondering, why the hell, right? So I wanted to build um, an object which I wanted to call task. And this task object would, be, would look very much like a thread, like you could you would call init, pass the target, and then call start, and it will asynchronously start at some point, basically like a Python thread, right? But I, and then I wanted people to be able to subclass my task class and define the run function and have it put the body of it right there, and it should just work. Now, however, I couldn't do this with Greenlet because when you create the Greenlet and you pass the function to init, it stores it in the run attribute, which is mutable, so you can change it between init and whenever you start it the first time. And it actually fetches that function from there using get ATTR from C. So I couldn't allow users to subclass and modify run because I wanted to provide an implementation for run in the first place. So it all started from there, and then I started modifying all sorts of things. <laughs> and it ended up like this. Another thing I, I wanted to, to do, uh, which I already mentioned, is early binding. So I wanted to decide very early on what function and with what arguments I wanted to run. So I wanted to do that in init, not when you first call switch, and then switch means something else. So uh, I like that idea that threads have, so, and that actually continue that also has. So I implemented it that way in fibers as well. Another thing I wanted to have was more exceptions in places where I think that should be expected. If you create a greenlet, switch to it, and then the greenlet is done, and you call switch again, you get back an empty tuple. That's obvious, so uh, not really. So I wanted an exception there. I wanted an error, a runtime error, something. You're switching to something which is dead, so don't do that. Um, so I wanted to have more errors spit on my face if I'm doing something wrong. And then I didn't want to have the magic exception. So greenlet exit is, in a way, a magic exception. So you throw that into a greenlet. And what, what happens is that that greenlet is killed, but that exception is not written anywhere, not to the standard error, not, no traceback, no nothing. It is swallowed, and the execution stops. So I think that this is, in a way, a bit magical, and I wanted to reduce the amount of magic because it's already a bit of it with all that stack switching going on. So I didn't define that exception. If you want to do something similar to that, it's very easy. In your function, you just try finally, Sorry, try accept and in the ex catch the exception you want and do pass, whatever. And then you're done. But you need to pass the explicit exception to throw. And then one last thing is um, on garbage collection, I didn't want to do any switch. So today, if you have um, a greenlet which is running, but, and you switch somewhere else, and then all the references to that greenlet up there are lost, it's garbage collected. But on the process, it's switching into. So basically, we do throw greenlet exit to terminate it. But that means that it's kind of like a side effect thing to my eyes, because we're doing something else, but we trigger garbage collection, and suddenly we switch execution there just so that we can kill it. So I didn't want that to happen. I didn't want to switch on garbage collection. So uh, actually, Continual doesn't do this either. And I wanted to have that uh, same concept. So I went that way. So this is why. I created this in the first place. And um, here's an example of how fibers look like. So uh, pretty much like the first example I, I show. So uh, we get with a current function call, we get the current fiber running. The example is the same, so, but here we pass the arguments uh, early on. So we pass that we want to call the bar function with 42, execute the function, call foo, switch to main, print 42, switch again, and we print hello because we resume here where we just were. And instead of having a dead function, uh, sorry, a dead attribute, I provided like the opposite, is alive. Why? Well, I don't know. It just sounded better. Uh, I made it a function, and in this case, well, it will return false. Now, I talked about a number of things. So there is greenlet, stackless, continuous. Um, so you might be confused. 
Um, I have a diagram explaining later. There's a number of projects using fibers already. First one, uh, which is the project I created it for, is called Evergreen. Uh, it's a library I wrote for doing uh, basically asynchronous I.O. in a synchronous looking fashion. Um, then we have Groovy by uh, Herr Jansen, which is somewhere around the room. And it's basically the same idea. We actually collaborated uh, in fibers together. He sent a very nice patch to fix a multi-threading issue. And uh, also uh, Benoit, which we'll talk later about his library offset, also uses fibers right there. In case you use it, draw me a line. I'll be very interested to know in what you're doing with it. And I'll put it up next time I give a talk similar to this one. So as um, sort of to round it, as closing, the stacklet sandwich would be this one. So at the bottom of it, we have the stacklet, which is the, the C library implementing one shot continuations for C. Then on top of that, but this is sort of PyPy uh, style because it has one more layer, the sandwich look better. Uh, so on top of that, we have like the Python version of it, the one which arranges for all these, uh, the state, the frames and so forth, which would be the continuum. And on top of that, we can build nicer looking APIs uh, for people to use like greenlet, the staglets, or actually fibers. So um, that's all I got. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. If not, my contact details are on my website. Uh, feel free to drop me a line anytime. Any questions? Um, how much assembly code is uh, required in porting to new platforms on fibers or, or <coughs> sacklet, I guess, versus greenlet? Yeah, well, uh, it's basically kind of the, the same thing. Oh, uh, the question. So how much assembler code is needed to port it to a new platform? It's basically a single file of assembler. I don't know, it's 50 lines of code or something like that. But to be honest, like, I'm not smart enough to write that. So uh, I stand on the shoulders of giants, like Armin Rigo, who wrote Stylet in the first place. So I didn't need to bother about that, let's say. But uh, I understand that it should not be that hard. Also. Greenlet actually supports more platforms um, than, than Staglet today. So I guess the reason is that Staglet is only used on PyPy, well, and on fibers. But it comes from there, and PyPy uh, only works on x86, 64, and ARM. So those are the three supported ones. Um, also, uh, stack, Stackless itself also has assembler code for other platforms, even like the Sony PS3. So. Uh, Probably you could take a peek there if you know that thing and uh, make it work. Um, I'm taking patches. Another question? Okay. All right. Thank Thanks for having me.